Okay, everybody. All right, we'll get going here. Thanks for joining. Uh, we should be underway. There we go. I see Jeffrey. I see Roger. Hey, guys. How we doing? Hello, hello. Hey, doing all right. All right, excellent. How am I coming through? Am I coming through all right? I'm getting this all figured out. Yeah, you <laughs> sound great. I love the. I love that background cave look you got there. It's very cool. <laughs> British pub. Yeah. Right there. Love it. Love it. Hey, BB. How are you? Good morning, everyone. There we go. Okay. And we are just waiting for Garrett. Okay, everybody, thank you for joining us. We got lots of great stuff today. We're going to talk about CPI. Uh, we're going to have another little AI discussion. Uh, this time, I think uh, Garrett's got some ideas on uh, how to play it. Um, some thoughts around that. And Jeffrey, we'll, uh, we'll definitely get to talk to you, get to know you a little bit first time on the show and uh, kind of dive into your process. And then I know you got something to share with us uh, uh, towards the end. So looking forward to that. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, uh, I know Roger, and I've uh, kind of worked with Garrett just a little bit. I haven't really worked with you at all, so uh, good to meet you. <laughs> there we go. All right. Awesome. Okay. Let's just give... Hey, Laura, where's Garrett, slacker? I, I just dropped him a line. So okay. Hopefully, he'll be on soon. <laughs> we can get started. Yeah, why don't we do that? Uh, let's... Uh, so... You know, we got uh, uh, CPI, PPI, all that stuff like that. Roger, I know you got some thoughts around uh, around them. Uh, why don't you tell us what you think about the, the numbers, uh, PPI in particular, and, and, and what do you think that's going to do for the markets? All right. Well, that's a great way to start, actually. And and again, welcome everyone to the to the uh, to the roundtable. Love the show. Great, great. We had so much fun here last week. We went a full hour. I loved it. Yep. So, so. Um, uh, the so what I think is I, th I think that the I think the CPI gave investors exactly a, a, a slight dose of reality that you know we live in this world you know it's amazing now that we now we've now we even have AI things are becoming people are used to everything like this they want everything in a minute so they think that inflation you know the Fed is just going to press a magic button and and they're going to just snap their fingers and Powell's going to make a couple of speeches and inflation is just going to disappear. It doesn't work that way. That's not how things work. I mean, food prices, uh, the CPI showed us that food prices have moved up 10% over the last year, they're, and they're still moving higher. So uh, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot more the Fed has to do. So I'm kind of, it, it was almost good, I think, that, that this CPI was a wake-up call and, and wasn't that great because, again, investors would start piling into things, and I think that's the wrong move right now. Mm -hmm. So what this CPI did was it, it showed us that, hey, we got to be a little cautious. Things are not moving nearly as fast as we thought. And by the way, three feds this yesterday said, we're going to be doing this longer. It's going mm -hmm. to continue yeah. happening. Nothing is going to stop right now. But investors keep pushing up tech stocks, which makes absolutely no sense. So I think the number mm -hmm. tomorrow – is going to be it's going to come very similarly to what we saw in the CPI. I think it's going to be uh, neutral. It's going to be not great, but it's not going to fall apart. And it's going to show investors that we we have to be very very cautious right now. And if we're not cautious, we're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna, we can potentially get into deep trouble because the night is still young for what the Fed is doing, and they're not done yet. That's what the CPI told me. That's what I believe the PPI will tell me as well. Yeah, no, that's great. No, I think, um, you know, you kind of had a, uh, it was uh, for the for the bull, it was a little dovish CPI eased on a trailing basis, but it came in hot on a forward looking basis, um, um, uh, you know, kind of in this middle, but you know, the, the Fed definitely is coming out saying this higher for longer thing and uh, the markets just aren't digesting it, that's for sure. Garrett, welcome. Oh, you're muted. Sorry, internet crashed. There we go. Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. How are you today? Great, 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 man. Glad to have you. Thank you. Uh, hey, we were just talking about CPI and PPI. Um, uh, any any thoughts around inflation? Uh, anything you want to share with us? Yeah, inflation's terrible and the market just screams higher. It's fine, right? It just totally <laughs> makes sense. That's just, basically it. it. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that I think, again, you look at some of this economic data that's coming out, retail sales were extraordinarily strong again today. I, I, I keep waiting for that to hit a wall. It just is not. I think that has a lot to do with the fact that real interest rates still remain negative. That is pushing consumers to spend. I think that this is going to hit a wall probably in Q3. But looking at CPI, I think it's again, it's a reminder that it's going to be very, very difficult for the Fed to get down to 2%. 
Um, I think they're going to have a real hard time just getting, getting and staying at four, uh, you know, at that point. So then a lot of questions start to emerge about what happens with the central bank moving forward. Do they just accept higher, higher uh, inflation because you're paying a trillion dollars a year in interest? These are all things that I, I think we're kicking these conversations down the road a little bit. We're not, we're not having those hard conversations, but for right now, Momentum remains strong in the market. We continue to see an expansion in uh, financial conditions. The, the the Chicago Fed numbers came out today, again, showing more risk-taking, more leverage, more um, people just keep putting money back into the system. So, you know, you ride that until it breaks, and then we, when it breaks, we get out of the way. But for right now, I mean, it, it just seems like every risk asset just keeps can, getting bid up, bid up, bid up, and people are just flat out ignoring the CPI at this point. Yeah, timing when to step out of the way is the tricky part, right? Um, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and uh, you may, I mean, inflating away the debt is uh, is certainly the uh, uh, resort that they uh, they always go to, right? So maybe that's uh, that's kind of in the back of their minds, but uh, but who knows, you know? And we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, and turn, you know, with on the back of this retail sales, it kind of is a reminder, you know, consumer credit ex is exploding higher. Um, uh, you know, I kind of mentioned this kind of paradox of uh, Fed rate heights encouraging more people to borrow, right? Uh, so they lock in before they get, and that's pulling a lot of that cash that was just sitting there out into the system. And hey, you know, I guess that's that could be a factor that we're seeing in retail sales. So that's interesting. Jeffrey, any uh, any comments uh, you got on CPI, PPI, that sort of thing? I know you're a, a technician. Oh. I know you're a technical guy. <laughs> I try to avoid uh, all this macro mumbo uh, jumbo, but uh, tell us your thoughts. Yeah, so I took graduate classes in international economics and stuff like that. Um, I, I probably know more about it than uh, the average bear out here. Uh, the Fed chases the market rate. Now, the, the interest rates in the market have topped out in October, and they've been on a downtrend ever since October, except for the last two weeks, and they started ticking up again. Now, um, the Fed set their target rate at that 2.5 or what was 4.5 to 4.75 rate in, in the last two weeks the actual market rate has started to come up to the top end of that range. If we break out higher, the, mar the Fed's going to be forced to chase that rate. They always chase the rate. If you didn't, if you think the Fed is setting the rate, they're not setting the rate. They're chasing the market rate. And, uh, you know, watching that is very important. I use the ticker DGS2 Delta Golf Sierra 2 on TradingView to track that real market two-year rate. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's the real thing. And, with these bills that keep passing, the Inflation Recycling Act, as I'm going to call it, um, <laughs> where we're just recycling inflation, when we pump money into the economy, it doesn't matter what we're doing, we're creating inflation. And the only way they can fight a $31 trillion national debt right now is hyperinflation. That's the only tool that they really have. And it's unfortunate that we're all going to live through it. We lived through it in the 70s. Um, I was just a, a wee little guy at that time. And, you know, into the 80s, and we're going to hit that cycle again. Um, it's part of us as humans. We get up in the morning about the same time. We eat lunch about the same time. We eat dinner the same time. We do the cycle. We have yearly cycles. We have, you know, decade cycles. We have market cycles. And it's all cycles, and it leads into this technical patterns that I follow. And uh, if you're not watching the technical patterns, then you're going to be left behind. And really, it doesn't matter what the Fed does. We're going into a period of hyperinflation. It's probably going to last the next decade. And we're, it's going to be here to stay or it's not going away. They're not fighting it as, you know, Garrett and Roger, it, you know, we're alluding to. It's just something we're going to have to live with for now. We, we stuck with this hyper low rate period for decades and now we're paying the piper, um, you know. Yeah, no, that's true. So, I mean, we, we started you know, ever since uh, rates peaked in 80s, uh, you know, we spent the last 40 years in a lowering rate cycle and the Fed opportunistically uh, disinflated the economy, right? Every time mm -hmm. it got it started to pick its head, they would raise rates uh, through the 80s and 90s, working that long-term inflationary rate uh, uh, lower in the face of you know much much larger debts. And then of course the Fed's balance sheet just got away with them uh, in starting in 2008. And um, uh, you know I, I, I inflating away the debt um, uh, that is there, there you know as far as that goes, there's no way that I would be buying. An instrument that pays me that I pay dollars now, and it pays me <laughs> back those same dollars in ten years, right? Karen, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think mean, who would I take think, that trade? 
uh, some people might um, because they're because they're pension funds or because they're just simply trying to protect nominal nominal figures. I mean, and and that goes on all the time. That's what happened in Europe, where people were buying negative uh, negative in, uh, negative bonds. Right? We had a eighteen trillion dollars in negative bonds. I think the one thing that I, I like I like this argument around the hyperinflation component in the next decade. I think the only potential outlier would be what will the a- impact of AI be if AI can uh, if on broad scale technology in a deflationary environment, you can use technology to grow exponentially. But I do think that that's going to kind of be a pipe dream as well. Um, yeah. Because mainly yeah. because every time that we do anything technologically and we have a big advancement, the Fed re- replies by pumping more money into the system because the, the system is built on debt. It requires more debt. It requires more capital. And yeah. even if you you know have the great advancements of the 1990s, the entire premise of the central banking in the 90s was you can't have deflation because Americans don't want their wages and their housing values to go down nominally. Right. Very even true. if it creates even if it even if it creates more abundance, they they yeah. they're so worried about the nominal impact of it. And that yeah. moving forward is going to be the the great divide. While everybody's all excited about AI. The central banks are going to turn right back around and expand the expand the debt system to fifty trillion dollars. Yeah. You know, it's, you know it's, Roger. It's, I'd love to hear. Uh, yeah, I know you got a couple it, comments there, and I want to I, make. A, I, there's a. I want to address a couple comments in the uh, questions in the uh, chat here. Just a second. Well, I want to hear from well, you, Roger. First. It, it, what I was just going to say, what Garrett was just talking about, it reminds me of. I'm sorry, guys, but it's it's funny. It's not political, but it's it's a story from the past. Basically, I used to live in California. I lived in California forever, and about. 20 something, 30 years. I don't know. God knows how long ago they adopted the lottery. Now they have a lottery in California. Mm -hmm. The big, the big, the big thing. And this reminded me is exactly what's going on with the Fed and what you just said. They, they were promising that they were going to give X amount of dollars to, uh, from, from the lottery to the schools. That was like the big, big thing that got them going in California. And they did. But you know what they did? The other funding they took right away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they they did they did exactly what they were gonna they, what they said but the, all the other stuff went away so so it's kind of like it's kind of like where's the where it's a you know you're, they're not we're not gonna get both of those buckets we're gonna get mm-hmm. one or the other so mm-hmm. and 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 again I, I I don't think I think a lot of people were talking about also I'm not and I'm not changing the topic I'm just making a reference that in in terms of it, looking forward to AI to save the day because it's going to create more opportunity. I, 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 I think I maybe if we were maybe down the road, but I don't think we're there yet. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. agreeing with you on that. I, I think that is a pipe dream at this point. You yeah. know, we got. Um, yeah, you know, that's great. And I think um, hey, just uh, for, as, regarding a couple of questions here, I saw in the, in the chat here, Ray was asking. You know, commodity super cycle. At, people are asking about gold, um, gold and oil and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, there's there's lots of forces at play, right? I mean, the commodities, the infrastructure investment, the resource development. Has, there's been massive, despite the shale phenomena in the U.S., which you know that. Uh, there's that still has had a, a significant amount of underinvestment, uh, but it certainly helped push off the implications of it. But you've got tight uh, resource constraints uh, across the board. Uh, you've got new commodities that are mattering that didn't matter 30 years ago, and those are tight, right? And on top of that, you've got labor tightness. You've got all this tightness on top of too much money. Uh, and then a lot of debt that needs to be inflated away. I mean, it's, uh, you know, who knows exactly how that's, that's all going to play out. But, um, you know, on that productivity, I mean, here's, you know, you know, during the 80s and 90s, the big mystery was the uh, productivity paradox, right? We've got everybody got mm-hmm. personal computers and, uh, you know, it, we were supposed to be, you know, one person uh, to start doing the work of, and here's the key to productivity, right? One person doing the work of one and a half person, and then two person, right? I mean, that's what happened in China. Right? When you took people out of the fields and took a w- wheelbarrow and a pickaxe out of their hand and gave them, you know, an assembly line, <laughs> they became much more productive, right? And that was a big part of uh, China's boom, right? We didn't see those kind of massive productivity gains with the personal computer age. And the really big question, and we talked touched on this last time, is are we going to see those same productivity gains? I mean, with baby boomers retiring and this labor force this tightness and, and all of this all of these things, you'd think, hey, one person, can they do the work of two people or three people with AI? Is that going to, and they, you know, automated assembly lines and just take that away? Um, you know, it hasn't showed up yet. 
uh, and we'll, that's the big mystery. That's the big question. So. I, just, just one, just one other comment. I mean, look, Elon mm-hmm. Musk has been promising the the full self driving experience now for what four years, yeah. and we can't. We're not even. I mean, it's it's. It's all great, but but there's a limit to it, you know. There, mm-hmm. And I think one of the things that happens, we we come out with a with a technological breakthrough, and then a lot of people start embellishing and making things and extrapolating and and going five steps ahead. And I think we have to just kind of take it for what it is, mm-hmm. and and not make more of it because whenever we make more of it, it ends up not serving anybody well. It it, it all goes back to that gold gold versus shovel argument. Um, you know, we want to be the shovel guys. We don't want to be the gold guys. So I'm taking this whole AI. Um, I'm taking this AI for what it is. It's a it's a modern calculator. It's a modern calculator at best at this point. It's not it's not a, it's not Terminator. It's not it's not a talking <laughs> person. We're just taking what we have and we're taking it to the next level at best. That's what it is. Let's not let's not jump and 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 make you know it, 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 that it, it is what it is basically let's not make more of it and i see a lot of people doing that and running with it and that's where the danger zone begins the um and we, let's uh, and i know uh garrett you've got a couple uh ai uh, particular things in the in the space you want to talk about and i want to talk about that but before we got so we got this inflation uh we kind of talked about the big picture issues around that um, uh, you know, Roger, last week we said we didn't see any catalyst, right, for equities or bond markets. Um, uh, do you still, is that the case, uh, Garrett? Uh, you know, uh, Jeffrey, I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts, but right, let's start with you, Roger. What, anything at all to kick this market out of its uh, sideways motion? Yes, but very unlikely. Uh, there's a couple of things. I think uh, one of the things could be the energy report. The energy report could really kickstart if if, if we're start, if we're seeing a lot of monkey business in the east, we can start seeing a lot of a lot of uh, upside movement in energies. And energies is what saved the day the the first six months as we were going into this. With energies, we would be really screwed. So I think we're going to see a catalyst in energies. That's one of the things I'm looking for, and I'm looking for them to go higher. And I'm also um, I'm also looking for a catalyst on retail. I think that even though re- the report today was positive. I think as the end of earnings nears, we're start we're going to start seeing a lot of the retail stocks. Uh, Crocs is coming out tomorrow. I think their numbers are not going to be as good. So I think that may be a catalyst for the downside. Again, the PPI could be huge, but I don't think it's going to be. I think the PPI is going to be in line, uh, very very much very much in line with the CPI. And as you've seen, the 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 Dow Jones has been as flat as a pancake now for mm-hmm. three months, or yeah. two and a half months. So, so I I don't think those things are going to take it out. I think what's going to happen is, I think investors are going to realize sometimes between now and maybe middle of March that things are really nowhere near as as good as they as they are. Uh, believing it is right now and what they're manifesting in the market. That's what I really believe is going to happen. It's not going to be one big thing. I think it's going to be a couple of, I think it's going to be the writing on the wall and and the, the behavior of the Fed. Love to hear what Here, Garrett, you, you Jeffrey see have to say. This market around? What's that for me? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Jeffrey. Yeah, you see anything to kick this market? I mean, what's, um, uh, it, it, you know, we've just been churning here. It's been uh, brutal for directional traders. Yeah. Um, what do you see? Well, the biggest thing I see is the fact that we had this huge downtrend line in all of 2022. The highs just kept making lower highs all the way down. And we broke through that trend line here in the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. And we're having trouble getting up uh, where we topped in August. You know, it's just, it's just kind of hovering right there. Yeah. If we can go retest that August high, and it's going to you know put us a lot further forward. And we'll see what the reaction is. We may have to pull down one more time off of that high, build up a little more energy to push through it. But I am kind of bullish looking at, you know, into Mm -hmm. late 2023, even into 2024, potentially. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, I've heard a lot of you guys, uh, you know, kind of sideways, but I think Mm -hmm. as as we work through some of the stuff, we could actually go bullish, kind of trick everybody a little bit as the Fed pauses, we actually get a positive momentum, money flow in the market. And then when the Fed decides they have to catch up again, we could see that second leg down, but we may make an all-time high before that happens. Uh, yeah. I think it's going to be a more drawn-out thing than people are thinking. You know, everybody's too many traders think that we're having a recession and we're going to a bottom and it's going lower. Uh, when everybody's on the same page, everybody's predicting the same thing. All the mainstream media is the same thing. Um, we we do the opposite, and it 
freaks everybody out. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Garrett? Anything to kick this thing out of the churn? So I'm gonna I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back to something that you might might surprise you. Just the very idea of risk off, just the very concept that people just decide to take gains off the table and they do it all at once. And when we were saying, "Tell me when to get out," well, we do that every day. Like that's in the free letter. It's our momentum indicator, and it was seven for seven last year, January thirteenth, April sixth, June eighth, April uh, August twenty seventh, uh, September fifteenth, December twelfth. Get the hell out of the market. And what we're seeing right now is very similar to where we were last August. We were, you've seen this relatively protracted sell-off that came off the IWM from around 200 down to 189. And then what happened? You get a two to three day squeeze. That, that's the exact same pattern that, that, that we saw last time. We were overbought at that period. The MACD just went negative on the daily. This is a very important time for caution. And I highly recommend it's, it's not that, that hard to do it because you could see it in the charts. If you just look at the Russell daily and you look at the RSI and the MACD and the MFI and the ADX, when these things go negative and they all do it at the same time, that typically signals that people are leaving and leaving quickly. So in this environment I'm looking at, I'm not comparing it to August. I'm looking back to June of last year. And on June 8th, there was a massive sell-off that transpired between June 8th and uh, January or June uh, 17th. I got out on June 8th because the signal said, get the hell out. And then we found out a week later, it was the largest sell-off of hedge funds in 15 years. So I'm just listening to that signal. I don't think there's any major catalyst. I think you just had a hell of a run up to start the year. Profit taking is definitely in, in play here. Energy pulling back the way it is is a little concerning to me right now because typically it's energy and utilities that have been the drivers lower uh, that ultimately pull this market down, particularly at the institutional level. Mm. Yeah, interesting. And all and, right, well, why don't you keep uh, keep the cock, Garrett? And I know you got. We, we were talking about AI earlier. Yeah. I know you got a couple of ideas on uh, on the space, uh, other than the big picture stuff we were talking about. Uh, you know, what do you think? Uh, how do you play? Palantir, 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 and then more Palantir. I mean, that's really the way that I see it. You know, the, if you're going to play it, you're going to want to play it within the government contracts. You don't want to have a significant amount of exposure to the private sector in this. Yeah. I think that this is just one of those companies. Look, it has had a really strong run. It's really picked up on the bottom of that uh, January period. We came from around six bucks. What I'm looking for is if this thing does pull back, I'm going to probably sell some puts on it if it gets back down into oversold territory. But there's something really intriguing about this. This company at the end of the day is war gaming to me. And the idea that you're going to be able to have these tools, these analytical tools that are going to take us away from, you know, you're saying not not to not to uh, you know say that it's you know five times the next you know the next thing to get to out ahead of yourself. But what I like about what some of the stuff can potentially do, particularly at the C-suite level and at the government level, is that it's no longer a binary thing. It, it, this is all built around decision tree analysis, the capacity of like, if this specific condition happens, what should a company do based on the Chinese GDP falling by 2% month over, you know, year over year, these type of decision making um, tools are going to be very, very critical moving forward. I think it's going to help in, improve efficiency in the boardroom. And I think it's going to obviously, um, it's not like the United States government is going to be planning on reducing its spending uh, around military anytime soon. So I like PL. LTR. And then when you get into negative momentum conditions, I'll short some of this stuff. I'll short some of the crypto in this space, but I am interested in some of the, you know, the web three stuff. Um, Fetch AI is a perfect example of this. The last time that momentum went positive, January 6th, Fetch AI crypto, which I wouldn't have traded until I see it now, went up 420%. That's just capital coming into the market. That is just people buying risk assets. I'll trade it that way. I'm not going to hold it for 10 to 15 years. But what I would look to do is trade some of this stuff. When you know <clears throat> capital's coming in, buy it, sell half of it, park it away, and don't look at it again. And then just try to repeat that cycle every time that you can. You're looking for an opportunity to get a free trade on some of these next generation stocks. I think that's the optimal way to do it. Uh, and uh, Jeffrey, what do you think? Yeah, well, PLTR is a big data. I mean, they're they're leveraging AI, but they're uh, they're really a big data analysis, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people just don't understand them. I think is what you're, where you were going with it, Garrett. 
is what exactly they do because you read their website and it's a bunch of garbly goo. I mean, it really is. Like, <laughs> it really is. It really is. <laughs> well, they're they're working for the government, of course. They're gonna t- they're gonna tell you that you know they uh, that they they they're, they're all people who used to work in sales, right? They don't. Not that they're yeah. uh, cloak and dagger. <laughs> and they've got a bunch of, you know, funny names for all their products. And they, they tell you, oh, it's, you know, it's cutting edge, you know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> you know, it's a like, cutting edge. What? Like, what are you doing? And uh, really, they're leveraging big data. I mean, just these, we have these warehouses that are just sucking in metadata. And these guys are creating software and AI that runs through that stuff and pulls out answers. And that's, you know, that's the big thing. And I don't think anybody here could argue that we're getting less of that. I mean, we're generating more data every day. We're, you know, and there's more politicians out there wanting to know more answers out of that data. And that's where, you know, plant. They want to know more about you, Jeff. They want to know about you. More about me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But the the, the chart right up here behind me is, uh, you know, my kind of expected path for the next few months on Palantir. hmm. Okay. That's great. And what's, uh, I can't see the, what's the number you got there on the right? Yeah, the far right here is 36 right now. Oof, um, okay, all right. Late late into October, so I'd and love like, I'd love to see that. Three, yeah. This, this could uh, this could take a little longer. I'm, I'm horrible mm-hmm. at time. Uh, time tends to to be my enemy as far as predicting when the moves actually happen. But uh, mm-hmm. you know, short term, I have a move up to about 15 by March, April. Then a pullback probably into you know that selling May go away May June. We we'll probably see a pullback into the 10 11 area. And then a rally up in to test the twenties by the late summer, probably. So, and uh, I personally like uh, I really for my for my choice I, I I like Nvidia. Nvidia just signed a contract with the U.S. government where one of the provisions, and I love this provision, is they're not allowing China to see what they're doing. It's specifically for it's specifically anti-China. So it's really hush hush. And if Nvidia keeps reinventing itself like it's been doing the last ten years, I mean, uh, there's. It just it seems like a very very comfortable bet, and it's it's that this is exactly where they're where they're going. Three D robotics AI. This is their neck of the woods. Remember, they started out with the video card processors. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. they're just take. I think they're going to take things to the next level, and uh, I am I am in love with this company. So, um, Roger, tell me, I I, I want to unpack that a little bit. You said something there at the beginning how they're they're positioning the products and uh, they're anti China. They, uh, so they, what are they doing there? They so 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 they signed a contract, a military. They signed a contract with the U.S. government. Okay, uh-huh. and usually when they sign a contract, they sign a contract. So you you know you're working with them, but you don't have it's not classified with a yeah. public company. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is a this is a rare classified contract where specifically prevents China from getting anything to do with what this research holds. Okay. All right. Well, and so I think that's a defense company now. They're, they are defense yeah. kind of, just like Raytheon. And, exactly. Uh, oh, wow. All right. Exactly. Yeah. So, so when I heard that, when I heard that, to me, that, I mean, I loved the company before that, but when I heard that, that yeah. was like, wow, that's pretty, I mean, that's pretty ballsy. You don't hear that every day. It was a very, mm-hmm. it was a very hush hush thing, but it was very specific. They don't want the Chinese n- involved in mm-hmm. this. So when I heard something, when I hear something like that, yeah. That that to me is telling me that they're doing something very, 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 very prosperous and very mm-hmm. important. Because if if it was if it wasn't that important, they would let you know they would let China in on it. So mm-hmm. yep. that 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 cloak and dagger, and with what I've seen from this company and the management, how fast mm-hmm. they can adapt and they yeah. can pivot. I think yeah. this company is really going places. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not real. I mean, I, I'm not as bullish right now on S and P or Nasdaq stocks, but I do like Nvidia for that reason. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's a good one- insight. The one, oh, compl- the one, you know, the one, com- the one compliment to what Roger's saying here about Nvidia, and this is this is one of those things that like you're doing research and you see a number and you say, "There's no way that can be right." Nvidia, you got its start obviously back in the nineteen in the in the nineties, and they were building they were building chips for things that didn't exist. They they basically knew that ten years from now, this is this is what the direction will be. And what's crazy is you know as as focused as they are, you know, in military, the video game industry alone. It's a two hundred billion dollar industry, and it, it, people associate it with you know oh you know it, it can't be that big. It's bigger than movies, publishing, sports, and music combined. <laughs> it's amazing. They make movies now from people. video games. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, and, then, and then they got the graphic and then they the mining on uh, cryptos, right? I mean, so mm-hmm. uh, they they they, they right. saw that coming too. So uh, yeah, and that's so that's what AI is. is it's just processing power, right? Once you have the neural net, I think Jeff Rudy, I saw you post something about this in one yeah. of our other Slack channels. You know, I've got, the, the, got the, the chart logic. up right here, Rahman. Yeah, let's look at this. This is really cool. This is beautiful, yeah. man. This is nice. Yeah, so, the logic uh, is still the same for AI. It's, it hasn't changed all that much, but what has changed is the way you process the information, right? So go ahead. Yeah, we have a, uh, you know, the first era here, like we were talking about, you didn't have these GPUs and processors that were programmable, which is what yeah. we've really gotten into with NVIDIA and AMD and their latest technologies. Um, and we had this first era and it really, something really changed right around the 2010s. Mm-hmm. And these, these super fast GPUs started coming out um, that were gigaflop, teraflop capable things that you plug into your personal computer. And then, mm-hmm. you know, companies are able to buy lots of these. And we talk about the shovel. Where is the shovel? Well, NVIDIA, to a lesser extent, AMD, um, to a much lesser extent, Intel, all produce shovels for the AI industry. Yeah, and yeah. this right here is the computing power that the AI industry is, re- you know, requiring. And it's on an exponential go right now. Yeah. And there's more and more people building. I mean, like, if you're getting into building an, an AI, you're trying to program it, you're trying to train it, you're trying to, you know, research it. You're going to be buying V100s and A100 uh, NVIDIA boards. And you look those up, they're like fifteen, sixteen, twenty thousand $20,000 boards. And they're buying hundreds, thousands of these to you know build their supercomputers to train these AIs. And um, I mean, you want to be on a, you know, buy the shovel. It's not just, you know, government contracts. It's, you know, this right here, my chart for NVIDIA. <laughs> straight up. Yeah, straight up. Like the uh I tell you what, and those arrows make it really convincing. No, <laughs> they do, <laughs> they do, they look really good. The um, you know, and, and Cyrus here in the chat room brought up uh, the point that I was about to bring up, right? I mean the, the processing speed is is uh you know, th- does it seem like we've hit the limit? We haven't, but I mean, for two or three years now, there have been a two a handful of companies, publicly traded companies that focus on quantum computing. Right. Uh, and quantum processing. It's like so we're talking pipe three. Two, you know, I mean, right now we can't. Although two years ago, chat GPT, if we would have said that's a pipe dream, you're not going to be able to do that. That's that would have been uh, certainly that would have been my, you know, can't do that yet. No, I can't imagine it. Blah, 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 blah. And, you know, quantum computing here. But once you marry AI with quantum computing, right. Uh, well, where's that the, going? I'm sure the AI is probably on that too. the AI is probably what's going to figure out quantum computing, honestly. Um, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. All right, guys. So this has been a great discussion. Uh, Jeffrey, you know, let's just take a little bit of time. I know you got some stuff you want to share, but before you do that, uh, nobody's got a chance to, uh, the, the, this crowd has probably seen you on other platforms, you know, but that's, but, but let's just take this, uh, let's take a few minutes. Tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about your background. And, and, and in particular, I'd love to understand the, the, the logic and uh, the reasoning behind your various technical approaches and how you put them together. All right. Yep. Yeah, let's really get down to the story of me. And uh, that kind of gives you the basis for how I got to be where I am and who I am. Okay. Um, okay. So all the way back in the third grade, uh, this is, you know, 80s, mid 80s. Uh, I uh, was on the bus with a guy that he pulled out some money and he said, you know, I got this off my dividend from Coke stock that my parents hold for me. And I was hooked right there. I had to know how you do this. How do you make money off of something, you know, how owning Coke, right? Uh, so then I got into playing the stock market game in, in elementary school, carried that all the way through. When I turned 18, I opened a real money account. Uh, and then the fun started. You know, that was uh, the late 90s, the E-Trade, the dot-com bubble. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I watched it all come apart. And I, I made a couple smart plays, just lucky stock picking in big tech that uh, some technologies that I believed in and returned thousands of percent return and kind of got me started. But that was not big money since I had no big money to start with. And I would kind of wandered. I, I, I learned futures trading. I learned options trading. I learned Forex trading. I learned, I just thought, you know, my family runs an engineering business. I actually have a, a construction engineering degree. And uh, I thought as an engineer, you just, I, there's just stuff I just don't know yet. And I was searching, looking for that stuff. I tried fundamental analysis, trading off of fundamentals. It seemed like 
like, God, I knew what the news was going to be. Like, I was pretty certain I knew what the news was going to be, but the reaction just doesn't like, like, how am I completely wrong? Like we've all been there. Right. Um, and, and then I happened across a guy that was able to predict the markets quite reliably through one of our uh, affiliate partners in uh, just, he, he turned me on to what, what they call Elliott wave theory. And uh, mm. it's all Fibonacci based. Mm. Yeah. And I spent, I spent four years learning that. Like I really dove into it. Come uh, late 2018, I started hitting some big trades. Um, then I was on the right side of everything in 2020. I was just, I was with the right people looking at the right news, predicted everything was going to come apart there in March made seven figures uh, using my techniques to predict where this, the market was going, pick the right stuff. And uh, my friend, Rob Booker, I was talking to him and he said, why don't you come on board and teach people to do what you do? And so in 2021, he helped me launch out Echo Trades to the world. And that it's well, a technical, uh, sorry, it's a it's a technical based uh, trend pullback continuation pattern that I trade. It's had a little trouble in the last year, but uh, um, the well, the if you want to share that, the screen, if you got some stuff that you want to share with us, why don't you uh, dive in? Yeah, well, I mean, um, related to Echo Trades, I can actually share the screen here. Let's go with this. Let's see, one second. Click the right button. There we go. And uh, yeah, you know, I have a, a special opportunity. Um, I call it the market roadmap, and uh, Really, it's it's a simpler version of Echo Trades. Echo Trades is very technical. Um, I had never taught anybody anything in the stock market before, and I started out with probably the most difficult thing I probably could have tried to teach anybody. So I, I went back and, and uh, simplified it down. Really got to the core of what it was that was a repeatable pattern that you could find, and I want to share an opportunity with you today about it. So I have this proprietary tool that I developed. And I use it to trade the market every single day. Every chart you've seen me throw up there, there was a stock chart today. I had this, this indicator on it. And I call it the market roadmap line. It's this orange line that runs right through here. And it's a Fibonacci-based set of EMAs that provides support and resistance. I mean, you see it right here on this chart, how it found resistance going higher, and then it popped through it. So this one chart, I mean, one line on my chart, well, it helps me anticipate stocks before they rise. Helps me sell stocks before they crash. It helps me build a watch list of stocks to monitor every single week and just a tons of other things. And it works on all different time frames. It's not like a, a daily chart only, but in the market roadmap, that's how we use it to keep it simple. So every week I release a watch list of at the minimum five stocks. And, and lately it's been up to 40 stocks that are set up prime to go higher. Wow. I'm always looking for the ones going higher with this tool. And I'd like to send you that list for the next 12 weeks, right? And I'm going to cut you a super special price on this too. It's part of this trading service I call the market roadmap. I mean, obviously I named the service after the, the line, you know, the market roadmap. So you get that weekly watch list and better yet, you get the code. I give you the whole code for the indicator and you get in my discord where we talk about it too. So normally this costs like $47. Uh, they've talked about raising the price on it. I don't know, but we're going to cut you a special deal for being here today in this round table audience. I'm going to cut it down to just $5. Hey, three months. wow. That's yeah, a right. steal right there. Yeah. I, I've been doing videos too. So every week I actually do a video that's, you know, between 10 and 20 minutes long going through every one of the stocks and how they play off that roadmap line. And you get that and full access to the, Indicator, full access to Discord, all together for that $5 price. And it's just a few clicks away. If you go to jeffreytrader.com slash roundtable right now, or you can call my team at 855-454-0816. You can claim this access. And we could probably go through a few charts and uh, show kind of how yeah, this works. Yeah, that'd be great. Too. Hey, uh, yeah. I think, why don't we go through a few charts, uh, maybe show us a little bit. And I and think for everybody out there, uh, you mentioned Fibonacci's and and some EMA. So EMA is exponential moving average, right? So you've got this yeah, yeah. collection of exponential moving averages that help you uh, plot that roadmap. Is that the right? Is that the case? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So sorry, my my super nerdy. Uh, you know, I, I tend to be up here and I forget to to jump down a little bit. So yeah, EMA exponential moving average. Uh, you know, a normal moving average gives equal weight to all the candles in the in the series. Like if you're doing a fifty, it takes fifty candles averages that price that's the the price the exponentials um do a 
a time weighted calculation where it places more emphasis on the more recent data, which is, I think, price is the only truth in the market. And uh, so the most recent price is more important than something that happened 50 candles ago. And uh, right, well, Ray loves it. I guess he's got it. It's uh, he calls it uncanny. So, yeah, why don't we look dig into some uh, dig into some of the stocks you got? Yeah, let's uh, let me pull up the, the list for the week. I'll just give away the list real quick for this week. Um, you can see I do every week, very here. nice, very mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we'll just uh, go through a few of these. Okay. See, this uh, ABBV right here came down and potentially going higher. We got to get above this resistance though on, on that one. I'll just you know hit some highlights here. Yeah. Uh, AEM breaking lower. That's not what we wanted to see. We want to see it hold the roadmap line. So that one's, you know, while it was on the watch list as a potential, it's not getting the continuation. So moving on. Um, this one still holding right at the lows. Nothing spectacular going on. Just wanted to keep watching. You know, this yep. is a watch list, not an entry list. So it, these are ones that are primed to, to be setting up here. This one starting to curl. That's one to keep an eye on. AXSM. Uh, another one, BTU. Oh, that one's a... Uh, Signal and a potential entry here with targets up here, 35, 38 on the upside. So that's an energy stock right there. It's been on the list for quite a while because it keeps bouncing off that roadmap line, but now it's starting to break higher, higher than it's been for a little while. So we'll see how that ends up the day. If it crushes back down, the entry is kind of invalidated for, for this cycle. So we'll see here. COP, another one appears to be on a pathway. This mm -hmm. one had a kind of it had two patterns that were conflicting. Um, the roadmap said it could go higher, but another analysis I do, Elliott Wave, um, said that potentially it was going to go down to 98. So it looks like it might go try to visit that 98 level. Another one, Cisco right here, just kind of bouncing on the roadmap line over and over and Earnings over. today. Yeah, earnings yeah. today. Yeah. So that, that one will probably be on my morning show tomorrow, and I'll talk about what's happening when they release earnings. <laughs> I do a morning show and go through what's moving for the day. So, that's And Jeffrey, mind. somebody asked, is this uh, available on Thinkorswim? The code? Um, yeah, I have a okay. Thinkorswim link in my Discord server. You just click the, the toss.mx link or whatever, and it'll pop it right into your Thinkorswim for you. It's, it's really simple, though. I give you the, the exact EMAs. In fact, I mean, it's just the 144 and 169 EMAs. If you're really interested, you wanted to just put it on your chart yourself. I'm not going to tell you how to color it orange, but uh, <laughs> and if you wanted to throw those two EMAs on there, and that's that's basically what the roadmap line is, 144 and 169 EMAs. Well, I that's awesome. Other, I got a little yeah, other magic. Well, I mean, so five bucks, that's crazy. Uh, that's yeah. really crazy. Anybody wouldn't give it a shot. Um, I mean, that's why that's why you guys listen to the show, right, everybody out there? Uh, not only did you get a full breakdown of the market, uh, interesting insight, but uh, man, you got five bucks uh, for uh, something that has got a really great track record. So, you know, jump ahead. I don't see why you wouldn't do it. Totally, totally. Really great price. Jeffrey, thank you for doing this for everyone. I really appreciate you sharing this today. This is uh, this is wonderful. I'm going to sign up and uh, try to decipher some of it this weekend. I'm actually really interested in back testing that uh, that Fibonacci moving average you created. Uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how it how it uh, how it does on my Amy broker test. But that's very cool. Folks, seriously, Jeffrey's the most stand up, the most honest, straightforward guy you'll ever meet. He's just he there's what you see is what you get. He's not a he's not a uh, he's he's just a, a trader. That's all he loves to do. That's what he is. He's, he doesn't have any ulterior motives. He just wants you to learn and make money. And uh, I love that. I love that about Jeffrey, which is which is great. I'm very uh, I'm very grateful to Booker for bringing you into the to our fold. <laughs> So yeah. that's that is great. Um, and if you have any questions, folks, you can also call 855-454-0816. Take advantage of it. It's the I promise you this. It's the best five bucks you will spend today. <laughs> I mean, you can't. Can you even get a cup of coffee? Uh, I mean, everything is so inflated. Can you even get a cup of coffee at Starbucks for five bucks anymore? I mean, it's. Uh, I joke with my wife that it's nine bucks coffee. Uh, it's start you know. Starbucks is nine bucks coffee. <laughs> and so what do you get for five bucks? You get, uh, how, how long you get, do you get the access? What's the deal again? What's the package? So, so we're giving you three months for five bucks and there's an upgrade option to get you a whole year for yeah. just a little bit more money. But, uh, yeah. you know, three months access, that's a weekly watch list every week, uh, at least 12 weeks, uh, maybe 13. Uh, and I give you that list and then you get in discord, which you get to talk to me. I'm there practically 24 seven. I do sleep a few hours a day, but uh, I answer questions all the time. Yeah. 
a lot of people don't understand how valuable that can be. Uh, if you get, you, you know, you work all day, you get off from work, you want to ask questions, I'll answer your questions when you get off and you don't have to make the live shows and all that stuff. Um, then I provide that video every week going through the watch list and the entries, the exits, the stops, the targets, the, I mean, just everything for every chart. You know, I just gave you a little sample of a few tickers. I go through every one of those on that list and you saw the list was pretty long. So I do that, put that video out. It uh, gets posted to discord. It gets emailed out. And uh, so you get the list, you get the, the actionable items on the list, what to watch for and 12 weeks with me, five bucks. I mean, come on. And it's a one-time <laughs> charge. Somebody's asking here, right? Yeah, so one time, one time. Charge. Yeah, it's one uh, time five charge. bucks gets you the three right. months. So, so come on, James, sign up, man. You guys do it, do it. You owe it to yourself, do folks. It. Do it, do it. It's, 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 it really, $5. <laughs> I mean, I remember when I was a kid, you buy a movie movie theater ticket for $5 back in 1979. I mean, you know, $5, this is, that's that's a deal of a lifetime. Take advantage, do it now. It's definitely something you want to do. And uh, folks, have a wonderful, uh, wonderful session. I got to run. I have a class in about 15 minutes that starts, Don. But I All right, I, Roger. We'll see I'll, you. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate your input. Of course. Garrett, Don, and Jeffrey, thank you guys so much. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Have a great time. Bye. Bye, Roger. All right. Well, hey, Jeffrey, anything else you want to cover on that before we let you go? It's been a really great session again today. I appreciate you being here. Oh, I mean, uh, let's just talk about the DGS2 real quick, just in case nobody's okay. seen this chart. Um, yeah. You know. So that now that I got the screen share, uh, I might as well just show what I was talking about earlier about the interest rates. The Here's the market rate, this blue line. And uh, here's the Fed rate. Here's their target right now, this orange box. They're, they're a little bit shy of the target, but that blue line is coming up into the target. And if it starts accelerating again, um, I kind of postul- uh, threw up the possibility that we see a, a little period of sideways and then the rates start going up again and freaking everybody out. Like that's not what the market's expecting. Everybody's expecting that we lower rates or, you know, the Fed does the pause and then they got to cut rates. But what if they start accelerating rate rises again? Just keep it yeah. in mind. That- well, I mean, that's that that's that that's the key, right, uh, is, uh, you know, how um, whether or not they actually pause or not. Is that target rate uh, and uh, all the Fed guys are out there telling that target rate is going to be a lot higher. Um, so, uh, expect it to stay higher for longer and that works. It's, that's going to work its way into that DGS line, uh, uh, keep grinding up, uh, for sure, you know, and, uh, probably even more if you were looking at the 10, 10 year, right? So that's the big recession indicator is the difference between that DGS two and DGS 10, right? That's the, uh, inverted yield curve. And that's like something around 90, hundred basis points right now. And it's just going to keep going. Uh, so no, that's, uh, that's great. Appreciate you sharing that, Jeff. Yeah. All right. Great. Excellent. Well, I hope you guys, you guys got to sign up for uh Jeffrey service. Uh, five bucks is nothing. You got to do it. Um, you know, somebody asked about uh, Nikki here, an old publication uh, that I was on, you know, cannabis stocks did not um, really go anywhere. That was a cannabis stocks publication. So, you know, they, they ended up having to shut that down and I just left, uh, I left them uh, uh, long before that. So uh, maybe that's why <laughs> I came over here with these guys started doing this. Uh, excellent. Okay, guys, uh, Garrett, any final thoughts? Oh, did we? I think he took off. I guess. Oh, not. no, it is just us. Okay, all right. Well, that's it, Jeff. We'll see you, man. Hey, appreciate it, and thank you guys yeah. all for uh, coming, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Maybe we can do it again sometime. <laughs> Absolutely, would love that. See you, Jeff. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. I'm going to leave the screen up for a little bit longer in case you wanted to place an order, give us a call. Thanks for coming.